I think I have found something in Antarctica that's completely different than anything else I've found. This isn't going to be a very long video, but I needed to share this with you guys. Now, anyone who's lived in a northern region, a cold region, knows the paradigm of you have the first snow, it falls, and when it hits your roof, of course, the heat melts it, the snow continues to fall, the ice forms under the snow, and you begin to see the patterns of the ice and the snow mix, and they become very, very distinct. And you can see this here in areas in Antarctica where there's just a nice clean area of snow, but then all of a sudden you start to see these patterns. And what it is, clearly, is ice under the snow. And as you can see the layering here, as I zoom in, someone's attempting to cover something up through the years. Now I have this area marked out with a rectangle to give you an idea of how big of an area this is. And it doesn't change no matter how far back you go in time. I've taken this back all the way to 84, and this exact area, for some reason, even though the areas around it stay perfectly white snow, this rectangle creates these patterns. Now, one thing I found that made me look closer was, of course, one more of these hidden, strange, hidden stamped corners that we found. We're on 24 of them now. That something was here, and they're attempting to use perspective time and layering to hide it. Now I know this is going to sound crazy, but stay with me. I found this hole in the ice. Now I know there's holes in the ice and they make strange shapes, but this one seemed very, very odd. Very, very strange, especially with its shape. And I know everybody thinks that I'm just seeing triangles, but it's not just the shape of this. See, this ice changes thickness. As you can see, like up here, for example, there's an enormous hunk of iceberg right here. And there's another one. Well, that's an island. But there's large chunks of ice out here. It's not just... Yeah, here's the other one I was going to talk about. Up here. Now, over here, something struck me as very odd. Off on the side here, we see an iceberg out in the water. But when you look at these pieces of ice, you see how these match this over here? It looks like broken glass. It looks like impact fracturing. And when you take these pieces, they all look like they were all one piece and they were connected here. Do you see all these sharp, jagged edges, like these things were cut? What I think happened was this. This, these three hunks of ice right here, were over here when this thing punched out. And when it punched out, it sent these things up flying into the sky. And of course, gravity took back over. They came down. A bunch of them landed out here in the water. But this one caught the edge of the ice sheet and smacked into here and then broke these pieces off and they floated away right by it. Because these cuts are too neat. This is this is impact fracturing. This isn't these things just didn't break off all by themselves in these pretty nice gorgeous patterns here and they're just oh so happen to be this giant iceberg next to it. Right next to this. This is a punch out. One of these underwater launches took place here, and this thing came flying up through the ice. And we've seen this happen. We've seen it in Florida, where we've seen these underwater things come just screaming up out of the water and head up off out into space multiple times. There's videos out there all over of this happening. And strangely enough, this happens right at the edge of what looks like an underground or under whatever you want to call it, underwater, underground, entry portal into Antarctica. That doesn't, doesn't change with time. I'm going to go back through the years here. Sometimes there's a little bit more snow. Sometimes there's less. But it pretty much stays constant. No matter how far back you go. That everything over here stays snow, and everything over here stays snow. But right here, 
there's some kind of a heat source, and there are some very weird patterns that show up in certain years that aren't normal or natural. Just strange, out in the middle of nowhere, melt. Clearly there's a heat source, a very contained, predictable, rectangular heat source. The distance here, 46 miles long, 14 miles wide. And as you can see, this part where it was, this is now 2003 we're looking at here, this is frozen over. And at this zoom level right here, you couldn't even get to that date, I don't think. 2004, here's uh, later 2004, 2006, later 2006, 2007. And as you can see, this uh, thickness, and there we go, we're back to 2012. And this, this looks like this was all one piece. It almost, I wish I had the type of computer technology that could pick these pieces up and put them right back together. It doesn't look like it would be all that hard. And I'll bet they would fit right here perfectly. And this thing came slamming down on the edge of it. It was sitting over here on top of the ice when this thing punched out. And it went flying up into space, probably this one and this one and this one for sure. Maybe this one out here. And it just took an edge of that ice with it. And chopped it out. I know it's theory, and I know there's going to be a million holes and a million, million trolls out there wanting to uh, shoot it down, but it just seems damn suspicious. And once again, we have an area of Antarctica that for no explicable reason whatsoever, somebody has decided to image in high res of the whole continent. And anybody who's gone out here and tried to do what I'm doing knows that there's certain areas you can go for 20 minutes and not find anything high res. And then all of a sudden, and you can do it in some areas, some years it's there, some years it's not. Some angles it's there, some angles it's not. I think what we're seeing here, and all this, this is just commentary, is there's a lot of different satellites up there that take a lot of different images, and Google takes them all and puts them together. And when you add in time and you add in layers and angles and all sorts of different things, I think it's a very hard thing to police, to be truthful. And sometimes things make it through the cracks. You know, like I said, these corners... I'm sure these were valiant attempts at hiding something that just got missed. And like I said, you could even be at that altitude right here, which is almost the high-res layer, and not see it. Definitely not at this layer. See, like over here, just this far away. I can zoom in as far as I want, and it's low res. Same here. And it changes over the years, but the resolution doesn't. That's what makes doing this kind of a challenge. Now this is back to 2010. And this was, if anybody was wondering what this was up here, um, in one of my very first videos... There was something here that looked very, very odd. And let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's almost perfectly diamond shaped. And just very, very weird. Like I said, this was like one of the first things I found when I was first looking out here. But you can do this for yourself. And like I said, you search through the years. And here's another one, actually, right here. And you can look through certain areas. It's like that, uh, I don't know what the games are, where you look at one picture, and then you look at the picture next to it, and you try to find the differences. It's a lot like that. It was how they actually used to find, strangely enough, and I'll leave with this since we're the last 10 minutes, how they used to find uh, asteroids or new 
planets or things out there, they would take a picture of the stars and then they would take a picture um, a certain time later and then they would overlay and see if anything was different. Now, computers do this in, you know, mind-boggling accuracy and time now to find these things, but they used to do it by hand. And that's pretty much what we're doing here is just the old style of finding things that change and are out of place. So the information's out there, but once again, like I said, this is a 2010 picture here where we don't see this. And this is what really makes the difference when you do this. Here's 2010. That, that's just not a natural melt formation. Why, why does this just strange, weird, triangle-shaped thing just decide it's going to melt and everything around it is all ice? And then, oh, by the way, over here we have what looks like some kid threw a baseball through his neighbor's window. I think it's pretty good evidence, but we'll leave it there. You guys have a great night. Like, share, subscribe.